Hello, my name is Ryan. I'm with Cold Climate Housing Research Center in Fairbanks, Alaska, and we're going to do a little tutorial video about vents and how what you can do with your waste drain vents to prevent it from frosting up in the winter. If you live in the Midwest or you know in North into Canada or Alaska, then this is something you likely have encountered at some point. And we're going to go over the basics of the plumbing system, the vent system, what it is and a few things we can do to retrofit that are economical that may help this problem for you in the future. You can see that you have your drain line and for this to work there is a P-trap and P-trap is an area that holds water and creates an air lock so that the air cannot flow back up into your sink or into your toilet. So in order for this water to move downstream it has to push air out and there needs to be somewhere for that to go particularly in a, in a, in a, in a toilet situation where you're, the water is leaving in a block and so it needs to push a volume of air in front of it for it to function. If you get frost in your vent and as often happens it basically puts a cork in it and once that cork is in there things stop functioning and you'll know that they'll stop functioning because you may have bubbles coming up when you flush your toilet. You'll begin to smell when, when, um, when solid and liquid waste mix, it, it creates sewer gas. And so you'll have the smell of sewer gas often, which is a problem. It's unhealthy. So what we need to do is we need to maintain our, our vent line from clogging so that your toilet flushing correctly and your drains flow correctly winter time. Anytime you're dealing with building you should always check your local codes. But what I have out here on the board is taken from the IRC, the International Residential Code Book, and it's often a good place to start. The, the IRC recommends that if you have a 97.5 percent chance of reaching zero degrees then the minimum size for your vent should be three inches diameter. There are things taken into account when sizing vents and in really with this tutorial we're going to deal with retrofit but in a new construction the number of the size of the house the number of fixtures all these things will determine the ultimately the size of your of your um, vent line your stack vent the other piece of code from the irc is that you should be a minimum of six inches above the roof or anticipated snow accumulation Obviously, you have to take into account your local area. So, the reason why the vents frost, obviously, is that, that your hot, humid air is coming up your line and it cools off enough to freeze in the line. Now, there's a couple things that are inherent with plumbing vent systems. One is, because you have air locks, these P-traps, at your fixtures, there is not a lot of free air movement in this system. So there isn't a lot of pressure to create a, a steady flow that would prevent it from frosting. So what are, the, what, what are the basic things you can do? And I'd say the number one thing you could do in a retrofit situation, and the first thing I'd try, because it, it is the cheapest solution out there by far, is to simply insulate your line. So wrapping the, the line with insulation is um, it's something that most, attic, most attics you're going to have some access to them and it's well within the range of, your, of a homeowner to go into the attic and wrap, and wrap the insulation around this. By retaining the heat in there it just prevents the air from cooling down so that when it exits it still has, it's still warm enough not to frost. There is another recommended option, which is to enlarge the size of your stack. So where it comes to the roof, and there are some code rules about this. One is that your enlargement should be at least a foot within side that space to be, be, when you enlarge it. In this case, we'd be going from three inch to four inches and and by enlarging this, is, it helps 
prevent, will also help prevent that frost from building. Here we are with our little demo. What this is representing your roof and and this would be the top of your ceiling in your house. So this is your attic space and we're assuming that this space is on heated. This is on conditioned. So what I have here is just a, a basic look at what it would look like to enlarge the stack. So we'll just run through a few different scenarios quickly here. Um, one would be you're in the Midwest or somewhere where you have a, and you go up and you find you have a two inch line, stack line, and it only happens once a year, it, you know, or maybe twice a year it frosts up and it's, you know, kind of a pain. You gotta get up there and dump hot water down your stack. If this was my, if this is the case, my first step in solving that problem would be to simply, to insulate this line through, through your attic space. This type of insulation that wraps around and seals, you can get in a variety of sizes that will fit anything from a two inch to a four inch to even a six inch line, although that's getting into a commercial level. Um, there's also products that you could use like a uh, self adhesive duct wrap, you know, it's just, it's adding, and this is like an R3 product really based on the fact that it's got the, the foil on there, but anything you do to retain the heat in here is going to help. Insulating on the inside is easily done with your foam wraps and, and pipe insulation types. On the outside, it gets a little more tricky, and that is often where the frosting occurs, is in that upper section. One solution is that you have your vent line coming up, is that you can slide a large diameter pipe down over it and fill the space with spray foam. And this would be a reasonable DIY type solution um, if I was going to spray foam this, there's a couple things I'd do. One is I would only fill it partially and let that cure and then, and then do, do it again and then fill again. At the top, you're going to want to shave down the foam and, and seal that with some type of uh, silicone or sealant that will weatherproof, kind of make a weatherproof cap there on it. You can also purchase a, a prefabricated um, insulated stack, you know, stack net that, that can go down, that, that will go down over it. The next option would be enlarging it. Enlarging it is a relatively easy process. This is designed to conform to a metal roof. The other style would be a flat metal plate that's designed to, to work into your shingle system. Now, almost all of these have adjustable, have different rings you can cut down. So you can, you can't make it smaller, but you can always make it bigger. Um, it would be a simply a matter of resizing the boot and putting an adapter. You can get them in a large variety. So you can go from two to three or from three to four, you know, and all the variations in between. Then the other, there's a few other options over the counter out there. One, if you lived in a very extreme environment, and this would be really for like northern or in the, Ar in the Arctic here, where you're above the Arctic Circle, you're in a high wind area, and this is a really, pr a real problem because any heat is immediately swept away. So Heatline, a Canadian company, produces what is called the, the Arctic Vent. This is a modular insulated stack that has, they have two, two different systems available with it. One is it has integrated hydronic coil within the stack, and the other it has a heat trace built into the unit. And these things are, and it's all designed, it's all designed to uh, use a minimum amount of power and be modula, in, in modulate itself. The, the difficulty, of course, is that you need power for this to operate. So 
Um, this would be something if you need a, re this, is, this would probably require a professional if you believe that you're someone who would benefit from an Arctic vent. There's a couple other things to consider in new construction if you're in a, a difficult environment in the Arctic, would be to limit the amount of vent line you have in your unconditioned attic space. So you'll often see lines run parallel and brought together in that unconditioned space. So you may have lines coming from multiple locations to a single stack in, 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 that, in that space, in which case all of that needs to be insulated. But I believe a better option is to limit the number, the amount of material you have in that unconditioned space. The less you have there, the more you retain the heat within it, the less likely you are to have a frosting issue. An option that will work, but it would be my last choice, would be heat tracing the line. The thing about heat trace is you really need to work with an electrician. The heat trace needs to be sized appropriately for the material it's going against. It, you should look at things about ha potentially having thermostatic control on the heat line and or timer settings on the heat line because uh, it's a huge power consumer once you start running uh, heat trace on, on it, it's just, it can be a huge power consumer and, um, and there is a risk if not sized appropriately, installed appropriately of potentially fire risk.